Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Product School webinar. The topic for today is leverage the business model as part of a product manager's toolbox. Before we start, I'd like to quote uh, Salesforce evangelist Vale of Shar. The difference between market takers and market makers is in product innovation. It is business model innovation. So as you walk through the slide and discuss the role that business models play in the lives of product managers, I'd like you to think about your past experience with business models and how you would like to implement what the dynamics of your business models are into your day-to-day -day lives as a product manager. So with that said, let's get started. My name is uh, Michael Rosales. I am an MBA. I'm a certified Scrum product owner. I am also a certified uh, product innovation professional from Spark Engine, and I am also a certified Scrum master. I am a 10 plus year digital product leader and business strategist. I have my contact information on screen for you. I'd love for us to connect uh, if you'd like. Uh, my email address is listed there and also my LinkedIn profile. This will be available for, uh, for the deck, so please feel free to reach out to me. A little bit about me. As I mentioned uh, from the outset, I am an experienced, uh, innovative, user center and entrepreneur product leader, thinker and business strategist with digital D D DNA, leveraging 10 plus years of product management experience. Specifically in managing the ideation, development, launch, and scaling of digital products for organizations in multiple industries, utilizing various business models, as well as building and implementing product management operational models to continuously capture and deliver value. As we, as we think about business models, and again, the role they play in the lives of product managers, uh, at the center of it is the value exchange. Uh, what activities an organization performs to continuously uh, deliver value, and as our audience and our customers and our end users, they're constantly uh, seeking to capture the value that they need uh, for whatever task they need to accomplish and whatever work they need to get done. Some notable organizations that I've worked with in the past and uh, the present also include Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, Nike Inc., City National Bank, Ingram Micro, Avery Products Corporation, Honda of North America, and Core Logic. And every organization that I've worked with, the level of my interaction with the product model has either been at the forefront or it's been obvious or it's been clear or it's been active in my day-to-day -day, uh, product management activities. And sometimes it just lays in the background. But in every role that I've played in, every role that I've worked in, the business model plays a role in how I go about doing my work as a product manager. And you'll see also as we discuss the content, uh, the content of the webinar, you'll also see and get a clearer picture of how exactly business models are, even if we don't know it, in our day-to-day -day lives as product managers. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the business model itself. Uh, a business model describes the rationale of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. That is the word value again. It can be described through nine building blocks, which include customer segments, value propositions, channels, customer relationships, revenue streams, key resources, key activities, key partnerships, and cost structure. The source of this was a strategizer. In our current economy, which is more and more driven within dig digital ecosystems, the impact, scale, reach, and speed that business models are shaping and transforming industries and market landscape is parallel to how emerging and foundational technologies have sped up the need for digital transformation. The digital transformation where business models are in the center of. Value is created by helping people get jobs done, meet their needs, and gracefully turn problems into solutions in the form of products and services. As product and business leaders, we are serious about innovating by innovation and optimizing the value exchange between our organizations and the market. We need to take on the challenge of the, of the business models, excuse me, we need to take the challenge of the role that business models play in innovation and update any outdated models. A viable, effective, and dynamic business model that is reflective of an organization's technology and business strategy is no longer a nice to have, but as we say in the product space, it's a must have. Our takeaways and learning outcomes for today's webinar are two, 
one, gain a deeper understanding of the purpose of business model, of a business model from a product manager's point of view. Two, to learn how the organization's business model fits into the product operations and the ways of working for a PM. And lastly, how to continuously deliver and capture value by keeping the business model top of mind. The webinar deck is organized by the following chapters. Chapter one, the product manager and the business model. Two, the impact and relationship between the business model, product operations, product ops, and the product manager. And chapter three is connecting the business model to a product manager's day-to-day -day work. Let's dig into it. Chapter one, the product manager and the business model. We'll be covering uh, such topics as who are we as product managers and what is expected of us, types of product managers, what is a business model and its purpose, and most notable and utilized types of business models. Who are we as product managers and what is expected of us? Product management is a dynamic, complex, and multifaceted business discipline and organizational function where business, technology, and user experience, UX, intersect. As you will see in this diagram here, we live as product managers and managers and digital leaders, we live within these three realms and we're constantly tapping into those areas, working with cross-functional teams to make sure that the value that is created and delivered right in the center, right in that sweet spot where you see product management is as optimized as possible. And again, based on what our business model is and how we're driven to continuously scale product market, uh, product market fits and continuously uh, capture value from our market. We spoke a little bit about value and the value exchange. I like to dive into that a little bit more. Uh, at our core, as product managers with digital DNA, we are digital business leaders, evangelists, thought leaders, outcome-driven, customer-obsessed, and orchestrators of cross-functional teams to create and capture value for business via products and services, also known as a value exchange. We continuously translate and activate the organization's vision by st strategically driving product ideation to launch and all of the functions, all of the product functions in between and the continual support and improvement of a business's products and services. As product managers, we are responsible, ultimately responsible and accountable for defining and articulating the what, who, where, why, and when of products while we view the world with our business model colored glasses. Types of products, types of product managers and the source here is uh, product school. There are many titles that product managers hold, but the most common goal, regardless of the title, is that we thrive and are tasked to efficiently design, build, and deliver value to market that maximizes the value exchange. PMs work in various industries, markets, businesses operating with various business models, selling unique products and services, and within cross-functional teams that implement their own version of an Agile framework, uh, Scrum, Kanban, Lean Extreme, Programming XP, Feature de Driven de uh, Development, Dynamic Systems Development, Method, et cetera, to name a few. Some of the uh, product manager titles that, that we've all heard of and maybe have in some point of our lives uh, actually been uh, functioning as our role include a product manager. The most uh, common and known progression of a PM role is to start off as associate, uh, move up to product manager, senior manager, senior product manager, lead, uh, group or principal, director, VP, and ultimately a CPO, certified uh, chief product officer. Uh, product owner, technical product manager, data analytics product manager, growth product manager, and in some cases, profit and loss uh, product manager. This is obviously not the a whole exhaustive list, but it provides you a little bit of idea of how our role uh, can be called many different things and how we might function as product leaders within an organization with a different uh, operating title. The business model and the dynamics that it produces is at the center of a PM's toolbox as we seek to capture the hearts, minds, and wallets of our users and customers. Depending on the expectations of your role as a PM, and to an extent, the business units that you engage and partner with, you will have very exposure and impact to set dynamics of a business model. What is a business model and its purpose? The business model is defined as a structural framework, building blocks, and interdependence 
fluid and dynamic dimensions for an organization to deliver on its product value propositions that optimize the value exchange. As PMs, we live and work in that value zone as we work with teams to ideate, design, and build products that meet and continuously scale product market fit. Speaking of product market fit, a product market fit and the product manager. I hope that at some point you have seen this diagram. This is uh, an example of a product market fit pyramid. Uh, and to define it a little bit, let's just discuss it. The product market fit, specifically for this topic, according to Lean Startup and Company, the product market fit pyramid is an actionable model that defines product market fit using five key components. In this hierarchical model, each component is a layer of the pyramid and is directly, directly related to the levels above and below it. From bottom to top, the, the five layers of the product market uh, fit pyramid are your target customer, your customer's underserved needs, your value proposition, your feature set, and your user experience. As we go on with the webinar, please reference this pyramid and, and think a little bit about how it fits into the, into the uh, business model and how it fits into the day-to-day -day product activities that as product managers we conduct. If you think about the feature set, you think about uh, working with UX to figure out exactly what problems we're trying to solve for our user community and stakeholders. And then we think about how that fits into the value proposition that the organization or at the product level have been set to meet said needs and, and, and actually meet the obligation of the value proposition that we promised to our uh, users, to our customers, users in the market. Most notable and utilized types of business models, the source for this was digital transformation expert, Benjamin Talon. Uh, we'll start with free model. This is an ad supported model uh, that is uh, one that makes use of and is supported by ads from platforms like Google and Facebook, which we're all familiar with. Freemium model, this model is commonly used and allows users to get free access to a basic version of the product. This version may be somewhat limited, but the user has the option to upgrade and pay for a premium version uh, should they want additional features. I'm sure we've all uh, come across these uh, products where we get a free version of something and we realize that it doesn't meet our needs, so there's a need for us to upgrade. That is exactly what the organization and the product manager behind the wall there is hoping that we do. Uh, the on-demand model, this model refers to a virtual product or service such as online video stores like Amazon Prime Video or Apple TV, where you could watch a video for a certain amount of time. And the most common uh, model, which we've all uh, utilized in some point in our lives, I would, uh, I would assume is an e-commerce model. This is the buying and selling of goods and services or the transmitting of funds or data over an electronic uh, network. Uh, I would like to point out the six types of traditional e-commerce models. They include business to consumer or B2C, business to business, B2B, consumer to business, C2B, consumer to consumer, C2C, and business to business to consumer, B2B to C. Uh, next is the marketplace model. This refers to a two-sided marketplace where, buyer, where sellers and buyers use a third-party platform to buy, trade, and sell goods and services. This includes Amazon and Uber. Digital platform ecosystem model. This model is one of the most complex, scalable, and robust digital business structure that leverages emerging, emerging technologies such as big data, AI, and IoT, to name a few. These include uh, Alibaba, Amazon, Apple, Google, Tesla, Uber, and Meta. The sharing model, access over ownership model. Uh, the digital economy opened the door to the, to the shared economy. Uh, this model enables an end user to pay for a product or service for a specified time without the need of ownership. A very popular business model, uh, I would say, that really has spawned a lot of the startups and a lot of the unicorns that we see out there that are providing that service for users that need a service or need a product, but don't necessarily want to take on the responsibility and the cost of that ownership. Uh, the experience model, so adding value to goods and services using digital technologies, an example of that is Tesla. The subscription model, this model's main component is having a customer pay a recurring price at a regular and scheduled interval for access to a product or service. An example of this is Netflix and Pandora. The open source model, this model is an open source community and collaborative project 
to develop and continuously work to improve open source software. Uh, lastly, is generating hidden revenue model. This model is based on the on excuse me, based on and driven by revenue that is generated where the user or customer is the product itself. Moving on to chapter two, the, on the, in this chapter, we will cover the impact and relationship between the product model, product operations, product ops, and the product man, uh, manager. We will cover what is uh, product operations, product ops, role of business model in product ops, and lastly, how does the PM, product manager, impact and influence the business model? What is product operations? As the product management operation operations organization it evolves, it has put the product or service at the center of the value exchange. The product has become the business, and this is further evidence of the presence of scale, the scaling rise of product-led growth. I encourage uh, everyone watching this webinar to, if they haven't already, to do some research on the emergence of product-led growth and how popular it is now to have products actually lead the business and how uh, the business model of that product is at the center of of not only just the product portfolio, but as, uh, of the organization as a whole. Pendle.io defines product operations as an operational function that optimizes the intersection of product, engineering, and customer success. It supports the R&D team and their go-to-market counterparts to improve alignment, communication, and processes around the product. Again, the product is at the center of the business itself. Role of business models in product ops. As the business model defines a structural framework, building blocks and interdependent dynamic dimensions for an organization to deliver on its product value propositions, a value exchange, the product model defines and sets the plan, processes, and mechanisms of how an organization will optimize the value exchange by aligning cross-functional teams within the organization for a single purpose. Think about the vision. Businesses and product uh, cross-functional teams are becoming more product-driven and embracing a customer-focused product operating model. Product ops has become connected from the top and integrated into all, excuse me, integrated into and across all functions and operations centered around product teams, delivering value for customers. The product ops model ultimately merges the why strategy and the how, the process, which is governed by the dynamic elements of the business model, which is guided by who is the customer, what are the value propositions, what are the revenue streams, what are the channels and touch points, how do we manage customer relationships, who are our key partners, what are our key activities, what are our key resources, and what is our cost structure. How does the PM impact and influence the business model? The principal purpose of a business in any economy, society at large, is to create and provide goods and services that meet the wants and needs of its population. Depending on the model, it may or may not operate for profit. The role of the PM has been described in several ways, which I'm sure some of you have already heard of, and actually might reference yourself as such. Uh, the CEO of the product, the glue between all the business functions that delivers the product that users want, the person accountable for what the product does, how it performs, and what it means for the business's bottom line. The product manager ultimately influences and decides the work that cross-functional teams invest time, invest time in, which literally cuts across all the dynamic elements listed previously, customer value propositions, revenue, uh, partners, et cetera. Understanding and embracing the challenges and the factors that impact, impact and influence the business model provide guidance to how a PM distributes her or her time, effort, and resources to each functions around the who, excuse me, on the what, who, when, where, and why of product management. Chapter three, connecting the business model to a PM's day-to-day -day work. We'll cover the seven phases of business model innovation, plus two, dimensions of a business model and how it impacts the work of a product manager. The seven phases of business model innovation plus two, the source here is business model generation written by Alexander Osterwalder and Yves Kinua. A PM will interact, engage with, and collaborate with, with various business people and organizations, all holding various and distinct responsibilities, but still share the same goal, which is to perform key activities, 
make informed and sound decisions, and work within a team structure to help business actualize its vision. Products help deliver and execute against that vision. The seven phases of business model innovation as depicted by the business model generation resource includes senior executive. Their focus is to establish a new business model in an old industry. The entrepreneur, the focus here is to help exploit the latest technological developments with the right business model. The entrepreneur, the focus is uh, addresses unsatisfied market and customer needs and build and builds businesses around them. The investor, the focus here is to invest in companies with the most competitive business models. The consultant, with the focus being to help clients question their business models and envision and build new ones. The designer, and the focus is to find the business model to launch an innovative product. Next, the conscientious entrepreneur. The focus here is to bring about social and economic change through innovative business models. Number eight is the engineer. Uh, the engineer focuses on the design and development of computer hardware and software systems. And lastly is the ninth. Uh, the focus for a product manager is to lead a cross-functional team in various product, op excuse me, product ops activities aimed to reach business objectives for a product to continuously deliver and capture value. As you notice in the title, we have the seven faces of BM plus two. I thought that the picture was a little bit incomplete here, so I I uh, added two more faces to what we know as being the seven faces of uh, business uh, innovation. I'm sorry, business model innovation. Uh, the engineer and the product manager obviously play a key role in, uh, in delivering those innovative products to market. The product manager as an orchestrator, the source here was Raul Abenyankar. Uh, it, you can see here as, as PMs, we uh, serve as orchestrators as such for a, for a symphony. Uh, trying to deliver uh, valuable music, if you will. And it pretty much starts with understanding what the value we're trying to create. And this is really centered around what problems we're trying to solve, working with our cross-functional teams to create that value, working with various business units to capture that value. Uh, again, working with another cross-functional team to communicate that value and ultimately deliver it. So you see it's a, it's a never-ending cycle that is non-linear and is constantly in motion. So as product managers, we sit right in the middle of it and we uh, orchestrate those activities, which I think is, is, uh, is the most fun and most exciting uh, part, of, part of our jobs as being. Nine elements of the business model uh, canvas. Referencing the business model generation canvas, the canvas provides a matrix of nine essential building blocks and areas of focus to build an implementable plan and overall business strategy to be successful in an ever-changing competitive landscape. How does each element impact the work of a product manager? Let's start with the first, which is customer segments. And when we think about what customer segments, what role they play in our business model and to, to, the, to the extent of what role the understanding of customer segments play in our day-to-day -day lives as product managers, we're constantly thinking about who is going to use this product or service and who are we going to deliver value to and solve problems for? How will their needs change as a market evolves and potential alternatives to our products are created? How will we respond? So we're constantly thinking about, again, who we're trying to solve problems for and who else in the competitive landscape is trying to do the same thing we are and more than likely trying to do it better at a lower cost and at a higher profit to them. Uh, next is product value propositions. What is the value that will be delivered to the customer? How will this make their lives and work better? So again, those product, pro those uh, value propositions are at the center of how we think we're going to be able to differentiate ourselves, differentiate our products from uh, market substitutes and alternatives. Next is revenue streams. How will the company make money from this product or services? What will be the revenue model, pricing strategy, and revenue? What will be the pro excuse? What will be the pricing strategy? and what will be the revenue model as well. So we think about how are we going to price our product and services? What model are we going to uh, implement when it comes to, if we decide to create a freemium model or subscription? So when we think about revenue, how are we going to have our, our, uh, our products and services make money? Understanding this component of the business model is key. Next is channels. How will the product service be sold or distributed? How will the target customer find you? What are the touch points? This is key to how we're going to deliver 
the value that we've created, how is our targeted audience going to capture this value? In this particular uh, element of the business model, a lot of communication with our marketing team. If you're in a startup, you may be the marketing team. If you're in a more established enterprise organization, this would be probably a unit of cross-functional uh, group of team uh, teammates that you work with. Customer relationships, what is, the, what is the success and support strategy for new and existing customers? What is the plan to feasibly capture and retain customers? This is a, a very integral element of the business model itself because we as product managers, we operate under establishing solid and valuable relationships. So having this element in our business model, having this element that is part of our business model be a part of our everyday thinking is key as product managers, again, to understand who our customers are and to keep that trust and a relationship strong between our organization and our uh, customer base. Key partners, who are the key partners and suppliers that we need to create and maintain relationships with as part of our business strategy? What is the resource exchange with them? So when we think about the partners that we are in business with, that we could be third-party vendors, how do we work with them to augment and assist us in making the total experience, the complete product experience of our product and services as valuable and as uh, profitable and sought after in the market as we would like it to be based again on our vision and what our business strategy is. What are the key activities? What are the essential and key activities that must be reflected in our operations and processes to optimize that value exchange? Key resources. What are the key resources? People, materials, data, tools, finances, et cetera, that we need to develop and manage to deliver our value propositions? What is our cost structure? What is our system to manage the fixed and variable costs to running the business financially responsible? Are we cost-driven or value-driven? So if you think about a little bit about these elements again and how they fit in, when we work in our day-to-day -day, uh, function as product managers, we're constantly thinking about again, what, what we're trying to solve for and how that translates into valuable products and services. And all of these nine elements play a key in how we communicate what product, what, what the value is of our product and services to our targeted audience and, and stakeholders. So as we think about, again, just the day-to-day -day work that we do, establishing relationships, understanding how we're going to solve certain problems and the mechanisms to how we're going to communicate with our uh, our uh, targeted audience to say, hey, we are we have built this product for you and we uh, understand what needs and what problems you're trying to solve for and these are the solutions that we come up with to help you in meeting those problems. Lastly, uh, before we close, uh, I wanted to share with you the innovation ambition metrics, matrix, excuse me. This is provided by uh, Harvard Business Review. Uh, the Ambition Matrix is a tool which helps companies identify ways to execute their strategy around where to play and how to win. Uh, the business model that your organization employs will be influenced by where your products and services are on this matrix. So as you can see, uh, you either fall into uh, the, uh, the core category, which is to optimize existing products for existing services, you're an adjacent, which you're now looking to expand uh, from the existing business and enter new, uh, new market areas, new uh, products and services that have been developed with some of the emerging and foundational technologies that we know are gaining traction in the economy. And lastly, transformational, developing breakthrough and, invented, and inventing things or markets that don't exist yet. So depending on where you fall within this matrix, Again, you're, you're working with your cross-functional teams to see what are the most prioritized and more potentially valuable problems to solve in the market and implementing your product operations. Remember, implementing your business model to be that uh, differentiator in the market that captures and op optimizes that value exchange. Thank you very much for joining today's webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something about how uh, business models and how they play a role in the lives of everyday product management functions. I hope we can talk about this subject uh, at a future time. Please uh, feel free to reach out to me, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. And I'd love to uh, continue our conversation on business models and 
or about any subject in product management uh, that, that you would like. I think we can learn a lot from one another. Thank you.